Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the award-winning recovery podcast, Get in the Herd. Um, I'm your host, Nathan Mitchell, and today we are in the herd with a father-son duo. Uh, we have James and Isaac with us today. We've got James joining us from, it looks like, a, a, your office at home somewhere, and then we get got Isaac here in the studio. James, buddy, welcome to the show. It's good to see you. Um, what brings you both on today? You asked me to be here. So so um, uh, we didn't get a chance to talk, but I want you to eat the mic like I am. To eat it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, can, you can move it up. up on it. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, James, good to see you, man. So what we've got here are two. We've got an alumni of the McShin Foundation, and we have a current participant at the McShin Foundation. So, James, you are alumni. You, were, uh, you went through the 28-day program. You went through – can I talk about your story? I mean, you, can, you, can. you want – why don't you share? Where, where, how did you find us? How did you hear about the McShin Foundation? Well, I heard about the McShin Foundation from – RSW Regional Jail. Okay. I spent 28 months there. Got out in July, but you know, I got involved with McShin to the jail program. You got July um, of 2021? No, I got involved with them in April of 2019 and spent about a year working the program there before COVID shut it down. And then took it upon myself really kind of we ran our own groups and stuff like that in the jail for the next year while COVID was shut down and that in turn kind of helped me find a purpose in my you know what I mean trying to help other people and help myself so I came to Richmond to kind of build that foundation and to get peer recovery specialist trained and then came home and now I'm working as a peer recovery specialist in the Shenandoah Valley, trying to help people coming out of the RSW build that sound fa same foundation. Wow, that's kind of the gist of it. So when you were when you were in jail um, for that period, you know that COVID period where there was no, you know, we didn't have people going in. You you were actually watching this show in there, weren't you? We were. We watched on the tablets. They on they the would load it on the tablets. That cracks me up. That cracks me up. Yeah, because I, when I met you in Kenyatta, you you both. I think it was Kenyatta who was asking me stuff about my personal life that I shared on the show, but I thought, how did this guy know that? And I went, oh, yeah, because I talked about it. And back when Alex was really doing the, the show back mm -hmm. then. That's cool, man. Well, welcome. Glad to have you. Glad so to be here, man. We, we've got your son on the show, Isaac, mm -hmm. over here. I don't know how that's possible, James, because you look like you're not even 40. I'm 46. <laughs> and, and, and Well, he's what, what are you, 12? 13. <laughs> 13? All right, all right. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Isaac. So so you got here, um, and you found this place, what, through your father, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you've been here now almost 28 days. Uh, 22, I want to say. 22. So you're, you're in, this is the that last week of the intensive program. How's it been so far? How did you find, you know, this place? What were your thoughts coming into it, and what's going on? Uh, honestly, I didn't know what to expect coming into it. I was a little bit scared, mm. but uh, once I got here, I realized that everybody here was super friendly. I made a lot of really good friends here. Um, I actually, one of my housemates is going to fly me up to Maine next year, and we're going to uh, have a little fun in Maine. Um, I I met a whole bunch of cool people. Yeah. What What have you learned? Um, I actually I learned a lot about what my dad was going through. I didn't really understand it until I got here. I mean, I knew it wasn't something he could help, but I also didn't know that it was something that stemmed from a lot of mental disorders. Like I didn't picture my dad. Like I always saw my dad happy and smiling and I didn't know that it could stem out of having things like depression, anxiety, yeah. bipolar. What did you learn for you? And that's what I was getting ready to ask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh pretty much the same thing that it it stems from my mental disorders and that i need to stay on top of treating those while i'm working on myself because if i don't then i just end up doing a full circle and end up right back in this chair yeah yeah james you've had an opportunity to speak to isaac over the past several weeks you know i imagine through through the house phone over at the at the intensive house how do you feel uh we've done how did how do we do with you and how are we doing with Isaac? Well, with me, 
it's a 360 degree turnaround from the person that I used to be and the person I am today. Like that, you know, as I can tell you probably better, like it's nowhere close to the person I was when I left three years ago. You know, and with Isaac, man, like he's just been willing, you know, from the first time that he called me on the phone and said he, you know, needed to get help or wanted to do something different. Like he's been willing to do that. You know, I mean, he was willing to leave home, come down there where he didn't know nobody, you know, and trust me that that he was going to be in a good place and there was going to be people there that were going to look after him and all that stuff, you know, and, and, from talking to him, like he's he's doing the process, you know, he got a home group, he got a sponsor, you know what I mean? He's talking to these people, you know what I mean? And I think that's the biggest, you know, it's been a blessing. Like, I can't even tell you, like, one, that I was in a position to be able to help him because three years ago I would not have been. And two, that he's been able to come down there and, and do the right things and shine. Yeah, for, for 22 days, man, so far. How, how, how long uh, – have you what all right we talk in 12 steps we talk about you know recovery dates we talk about you know sober date clean date how long have you been in recovery at this point 22 days um i was sober five days before i checked in mm. uh so yeah pretty much 22 27 27 days 27 days in wow wow so you got the end of the 28 days coming up soon i do you and I had a little conversation earlier today. James, have you have you talked to him about some th- things that are going through his head right now? I have a little bit. Uh, any thoughts on that? I hope he stays. <laughs> yeah. What do you, you know, but, but I also know that that's not a decision I can I can make for him. You know, I couldn't make the decision for him to, you know, want to get help. I can't make the decision for him to, you know, stay. But I want him to know that there's options out there for him. You know what I mean? And if he comes home, you know what I mean? There's things we can do to keep his recovery going even here. You know what I mean? So. If he comes home, he'll be close to you? Yes. Oh, okay. I I thought you guys were going different directions. No, I live about 20 minutes north. Uh, Okay. Okay. He lives Uh, close to where my office is, actually, or where I work, actually. Ah, okay. That's good. That's good. That's good continuity there. So, so, uh. When I talked to you this morning, you were telling me a whole bunch of things that were going on with you and, you know, the living situation for your girlfriend, or your fiance, and what was going on with that. And, you know, immediately the decision was, I'm not going to stay here beyond the 28 days. I need to go home and take care of that, you know, fix this. Um, and I, I, I wonder, have you, you know, I talked to you this morning. Has, has there been any thought process moving forward on that? Um, I did, uh, I talked to John a little bit today. We went out for lunch and, uh, we talked about my uh, exit plan a good bit today. Um, and one of the things that is going to continue after I go home is, uh, we're setting me up with online PRS classes. Mm -hmm. So I'm as well going to get my CPRS. Um, and Mm -hmm. he was telling me about this place where I could continue to go to meetings and stuff in my area. Um, like right down the road from where I live. Um, so as of right now, the plan is to still go home, uh, because we gotta, I gotta get on the ball. We gotta get a place to live. Um, my, my mom and I don't get along very well. Um, and we haven't for a couple of years. And I feel like if I stay at my mom's house, it's just gonna, just gonna be another problem. Right. So, um, as of right now, the plan is to go home. Uh, last week the plan was to stay. This week the plan is, is to go home. So we'll see how I'm feeling in a few days, I guess. Yeah. Well, this that's these are a lot of important decisions to to make early on in recovery. You know, and, and things that I have learned from you know my sponsor and and you know because I work a twelve step fellowship and and the people around me who are you know close to me and who can check me on things is that you know I don't tend to make the best decisions on my own. You know. Um, and I, I tend to sometimes make this, I want to make, yeah, James, you're laughing because I, I, I bet you probably agree. And I can sometimes make really bad decisions when I'm just responding on my emotion or just responding to an emotion or just reacting actually, not even responding. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. So, you know, I, I'm glad that what I'm hearing from you when you're speaking right now is there's a little open-mindedness to the possibility that in a couple of days, you know, that thought process can, can change for you because I, 
like James said, I mean, it's obviously your father, you know, none of us here can tell you what to do, you know, and, and, and really the only, the only option, you know, besides, the only other thing that could happen to you that would force you to make a decision is, 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 you know, getting arrested for, for using or something or anything else and, and being forced to, you know, go into some sort of other place. So without that, obviously on the table, you know, you, you're making some really important life decisions right now, whether you realize that or not. Um, and, and, you know, this is, this is some far reaching stuff. It's tough to make those decisions at 28 days. Shoot. I'm 45 years old and I've got almost, so I've got three years and 10 months right now. And, and it's still hard for me to make big giant decisions. So, you know, I, I applaud you for talking about it seriously and bringing it up and, and, and listening to people as they're, they're telling you some stuff because, you know, taking suggestions, taking suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'll say this, you know what I mean? Like I was, I was coming home too, man, all the way up until that 28th day. Mm. Like I was leaving, I was coming home. I had been away from my family long enough, you know, but you know, I'll say this to you, Isaac, like staying there was the best life decision I made recently. You know what I mean? And I didn't make that on my own. Like, you know, I took those suggestions from everybody, John cricket, Rob, you know, everybody, Nathan, everybody that I talked to was like, you know, y'all really think about this. You know what I mean? Like all that stuff that is, here that you, we need to take care of it's still going to be here when we get back you know what i mean and like nathan said i don't make the best i know i don't make the best decisions for myself at all you know what i mean and you know that better than anybody when i start making decisions for myself I'm, I, it's not going to be pretty you know what i mean like i'm really glad you got an open mind with it too you know what i mean and you'll make the right decision and i'll support whatever decision you make and when you come home, you're going to have to go to meetings with me. Or I'd I, like you. I should. I, I would like you to go to meetings with me, I should say. <laughs> well, so, now, still a dad, yeah. Well, I, now I know how to find them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I see that we've got a comment or two up there. What do we got, Justin? Anything good up there? Uh, Brian, uh, Brian, buddy, it's good to see you, man. Stay as long as you can. You will not regret it. It only gets better and better. And then we have from Dolores Kibler. Oh, his grandma. Oh, Thank is that? You, oh, okay. Oh, I like that. You can't help. You can't help anyone till you help yourself. Love you. Amen. Aww. Hey, Gma, do you make snickerdoodles? Because this guy right here likes them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it's funny because we get a lot of moms and, and well, dads. Too. I mean, I bake, you know, we get a lot of family members who watch the show and I'm always asking the same questions because, you know, this belly doesn't feed itself. But, <laughs> but all right. So with all that you got going on and I'm sure you got obviously you've got opinions from your family and you've probably heard some opinions from staff members, you know, and, and, and I appreciate that you've been asking people things, you know, what all that aside. You know, you you've been given some tools. You know, you've you've started to grow some tools, put in your toolbox. Toolbox, different than a toolbox. Your toolbox. You know, and and what I what James was saying and what you said. You know, you've got a home group already. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So you've had a you've had a home group while you've been here. What's your home group here? Uh, it's Thursday night. I can't remember the name of the meeting. That's okay. Actually, I guess technically we're breaking out anyway. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Yeah. So you have a home group. You you've got. You've been following some suggestions. Have you found a, a sponsor slash mentor while you've been here? Uh, yeah, my sponsor. Um, I call him every night, nine o'clock on the dot. Nice. Um, we are. He said for the first thirty days, I'm just reading who is an addict over and over and over again. Checks out. <laughs> yeah. Checks out. <laughs> how how has that been for you? Um, I've got a notebook in my book bag where I have written down every time I go through and read, I find something new that stands out to me. Hmm. And every time I find something that stands out to me, I write it down, it, whether it be in a class, in a meeting, in a book. It's all in those notebooks. I've got them in my bag and I take them with me everywhere. Um, I'm sure you've seen me in your group sitting there writing stuff down. It's the, like the best way to learn. Your is, recovery coach is John S., isn't it? Yes. Ah, so, so here, James, this is how it all works, right? Okay. So oh, no. Isaac and I had a little conversation this morning before stand up. Now y'all know it's it's a, it's actually incredible that I got here before stand up, but that's another story entirely, right? <laughs> we had this little crazy conversation before stand up, and I was like, "Why you want to leave on Sunday?" And so at stand up, I said, 
man, this boy talk about leaving on Sunday, blah, 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 blah. I said, who's his recovery coach? And I said, you know, and I found out John said, ah, well, he needs to take him out. And he did. I, I forgot that that was a connection we all made together this morning. So that's how we operate as a team around here. And I, I like that. You know, that, that actually I'm really I forgot about that. I'm glad to, to hear that that all kind of worked out because, you know, I've just been sitting in meetings today, you know, talking about what my job is here, right? And and not just me, but like all of us, you know, we're doing this thing. And, you know, you know, I talk about the aspects of my job, that the outreach and, and this and that and the other. What, you know, I talked about all that and I said, but also let me just tell you, you know, primarily, and what I see as my primary function is to be an effective recovery coach, which means sometimes I have to remind myself that when I'm like, pushing people out the door and i'm like no no no, I, I have to finish this paperwork here business and that was for you justin and uh and for you <laughs> um you know and, and but my primary role was you know i'm not a, i'm not a certified prs i am a prs and i i just need to go take the damn test eventually but yeah okay right and so like i mean i operate as a prs all the time and that's the people i'm surrounded with all the time you know like i have other things that i do and i do that and blah 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 and when it comes right down to it, like my primary function is to be, you know, of service to the next person in front of me, which I absolutely love, you know, and I love that I'm surrounded by people who also have that same philosophy for the most part. So, you know, I, I, I live in a bit of a bubble, you know, because even though technic, you know, my, my work and my recovery are supposed to be separated by, you know, a giant ocean. Um, you know, I got my recovery through a McShin jail pod. I got my recovery through living in McShin housing and, and coming up here for the program all the time. And some of my friends, I work with some of my friends, you know, I, 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 you know, I haven't lived in our housing in over a year now, but I mean, obviously I'm still here every day. And, you know, this is an important part of my recovery, a vital part of my early recovery. So, you know, I, I, whatever you end up doing, you know, whether that's, you know, if you do go home, you know, whatever, whatever you end up doing, man, like the people and connections you've made here, you know, we're still here for you. You know, whether that means, you know, you're calling us up, you're chatting on Facebook, you know, whatever messenger and stuff, you know, use those resources. You know, these don't just go away because you, you go and you decide that, you know, your you and your fiance need to figure things out. I get that. You know, you've got those resources. All right. I, I talked long enough. What other resources have you gotten while you've been here? You got a sponsor, you got a home group. What else have you learned? I want to hear um, more about that. I actually, I have your business card in my wallet. There you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> business. <laughs> business. Um, that in 50 cents will get you 50 cents. But <laughs> um, So I, I've been collecting phone numbers since the day I got here. Um, mm. Because who you call and what you, like, before who, who, you do wait, something. Who, who calls? Who I call. Ah, oh, okay. Just making sure. Uh, who I call <laughs> before I do something rash or dumb. They can make a huge difference. Um, like, you know, if I call somebody that's just going to co-sign it, mm. that's where I'm going to mess up. They're going to be like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Go for it. Whereas if I call somebody who's been in long-term recovery and they're not just going to tell me, hey, that's a dumb idea. Instead, they're going to say, if you do that, you're throwing everything away. Yeah, that's That's the important part. And so I've got uh, a few numbers from people that have been like John, who's been what, 40 years clean, 30, almost 39, yeah, 39. Um, I've got his number. Mm -hmm. um, my sponsor, he recently looped back in, but he uh, he reached two years the other day. Okay. Um, and I've got a few that I still need to grab um, that. I will be seeing at some point today, tomorrow. Um, and a few of the people from my house, because yeah. you know, we, we are the herd. We, we spend all our time together side by side. We walk over to the house together. We walk back over to the church together. We are the herd. That, that sounds like the next promo video there, Justin. It does. What's that? He just promoted the show right there. That was all right. <laughs> we He's are very good herd. at that. Well, the herd. I was walking, I was walking over to the church this morning and I had left something up in the room and I ran back up to go grab it real quick and came back out the front door. And one of my housemates turned around and he yelled, mm -hmm. you got to catch up. You're going to be that gazelle. Mm. 
Mm. James, how does this ring in for you, man? You you were here for uh, you became a house leader. You left you left the intensive house and went straight over to house leadership. Is that correct? I forget. Yeah, I was only really in the intensive house like three days, four days. <laughs> oh, that it? They, yeah, because they needed. I mean, I stayed in the intensive program, oh, but yeah, I, 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 just because I had the time in the jail and everything, and they needed the room. But yeah, I was a house leader. For two months, I don't know. I was there from July till the end of September. No, yeah. October. I left in the middle of October, something like that. What? You know, what? Camera is out of focus for some reason. Yeah. You know, Isaac talking about that herd and uh, using those phone numbers. You know, that's how that's how Isaac got down there. You know, when Isaac called me, you know, I had a herd of people and a network of people that I called. Because it's straight, you know. I mean, I, I had a lot of self blame there for why he was in the situation he he was in, you know. So I was like those people were able to talk to me, and then they were like, "Well, you know, you can bring him here, no, not, not a problem." But my network is what how he ended up there. That network is very very important, and not just calling one person to get one one suggestion, but calling multiple people. Yeah. yeah. So. James, so you, you what what was the what was the process there that got Isaac here? He called yeah. and said he wanted he called me. He did uh and actually before he told me he got in trouble, he said, you know, I need to do something. I think I got a problem. And then he told me he got in a little bit of trouble. And you know, like immediately I said, Well, I, I can help you with that for real. Because that's you know, I was in the position to be able to do that. So we talked a little bit about that. And then, like I said, like, because I was going through some stuff with the fact that, I got, like I said, I had a lot of self-blame for that situation. You know what I mean? So uh, I started reaching out to my network, you know, to talk to them for myself because I needed – my head wasn't in the best place. And they uh, – I was talking to Kenyatta, actually, and Kenyatta's like, you know you can bring him here. I'm like, yeah. one, you, you don't make that call, but – <laughs> and, you know, I never, <laughs> you know, I never really thought about it. He's like, well, I'm going in here right now, you know, and I'm going to talk to Joyce and Mo. And he hung up on me, actually, you know, and he was like, he called me back in a couple of minutes and said, you know, Joyce and him said, like, you need to bring him here. So I called Isaac back and said, you know, if you want to go to Richmond, you know, we, I can take you right now or, you know, I mean, whatever. And a couple of days went by and he called and said he wanted to go. So before he could change his mind, I told him I'd pick him up the next morning. Hmm. You know, you know, the rest is kind of history. <clears throat> I was That's actually awesome. scared. To I was scared to death he wasn't going to go for real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because at 20, like I, I get, he's got a lot of courage. I want to say that too. Like at 21 years old, you couldn't have told me nothing. You know what I mean? Like you want me to quit doing what? You want me to go get help for what? Like I would have just, I would have bucked on that all the way. You know what I mean? Just yeah. that's just how I was. So like, that courage it took for him to one call and say, you know, I want to get help. Yeah, I, I can't like I'm I'm envious and it's an inspiration to me, like to see him do that. Inspiring, I should say, for him to do that. Cause I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. How how incredible is it that you were in a position, you know, in recovery with a little bit of knowledge, well, a lot of knowledge. You know, and 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 right there and available. You know, we talk about a program of attraction, right? Mm-hmm. You know, rather than promotion. And here you are doing it right there for your son. That's freaking amazing. Yeah. So I had, I had somebody tell me. I don't even remember. I talked to, like I said, a lot of people. Like I said, because I was blaming myself a lot. You know, and that is a life that I showed my kids, both of them, over you know, their lives. That because that's the life I lived. That was okay and. That was all this, you know what I mean? And I had somebody tell me, you know, even though I showed them that life, I also showed them that there was a way out of it. And, you know what I mean, a way out of that life. So that's why I'm really glad he's there and he's doing what he needs to do to take care of it now. Yeah. I definitely don't want to see him or his sister, or either one ever go down the road that I did. How do you, how does that, how does that feel hearing that? I, wouldn't have even thought about it in all honesty i wouldn't have even thought about it um i called him and i said hey i need i need some advice that that was the original conversation was hey i need some advice 
Um, and I told him I had gotten myself in a little bit of trouble. What kind of trouble? I I picked up a DUI. Okay. Um, my first one, and and a lot of it is supplied by where I work. And so I called him while I was in the middle of my shift, and I said, "Hey, I I need some I need some help. I need some advice." Um. So when he was, when when I saw how this all worked for him, it was really inspiring to me. Because I have seen him come from multiple different communities, programs, centers. And so when I saw how this one had really worked for him, that was inspiring to me. And it said to me, hey, I have an option. And this option could be beneficial to me. Um, so I think it was five days later or four days later because he came and picked me up the next morning. I, I called him back and I said, I'm ready to go. And and that was a really hard decision to make. Um, I had to get everything squared away with work and they were they were really cooperative with me. I'm actually still getting paid. Um wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You're here and you're getting paid. What do you do? I'm a cook. And you're getting paid. Yeah. For not cooking. Yeah. Man, <laughs> my office is right there. You ain't brought me one meal since you've been here. Uh, well, mom, uh, yeah. mom's collecting my paychecks right now. Uh, without without saying names or anything like that, like you must have a manager that's in recovery. Um, not in recovery, but when I sat down and had the conversation with him, it turns out that we have the same mental disorder, and my mental disorder is where this stems from for me. Ah, that makes sense. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So when I told him that. I was having trouble with my with my mental side of things and that my uh my issue was becoming a bit of a problem. Um he said we'll see you when you get back. And I called a friend that works there when I got here and he said, "Yeah, he's still setting paychecks out here for you." Wow. What um what are you doing and you don't have to get specific on what what the issues are, but what are you doing to maintain your mental health? Are you taking care of things? Um, I'm supposed to be seeing a psychiatrist. It's been. I'm not asking what you're supposed to be doing. I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I and I've been pushing for it since I got here. Okay. Um, they asked me when I sat down in that first room, and that's been something that hasn't gone to plan exactly yet, but we're working on it still, um, because it apparently wasn't in my original plan. Okay. Um, so. As of right now, I'm still taking my medication. Okay. Uh, it's on a little bit of a lower dose than it's supposed to be, but I'm still taking it. Um, I'm going to meetings and actually talking about how I'm feeling. Um, like last week, I sat down in our mental health meeting and I told the majority of my story about where all of my mental issues stem from. Um, and that actually really helped a lot because for the longest time I haven't let myself feel that even before I started using. Um, and I, I didn't want to. Yeah. And it was very difficult to get it all out there. But once I got it all out there, I felt so much better. Yeah. What, um, do you have the resources? And I'm, I'm guessing James is probably the answer to this. Are the resources available up there near your way? Yeah. To take, to take care of things on a, on a, in a more, you know, you know, fulfilling way. I mean, it's one thing to find the medicine and just go with it. It's another thing to be tackling and talking and, and meeting somebody, you know, clinically as well as through, you know, the recovery groups. Um, yeah, there, my, I have a psychiatrist currently, um, but he's in, I want to say Loudoun County, okay, which is a good bit away from where I live. Not super far, but not super close. Um, and uh, I'm working on, I'm going to work on finding a therapist when I do go home. Yeah. Um, because that's, that's going to be a big thing for me is I need to be able to, if I can talk in front of a group of people, why can't I talk to a therapist? Yeah. Um, and that, that's like a big step for me. Cause for the longest time, my mom would take me to see them and I would just sit in there on the couch and not say a word. Um, but the psychiatrist is a definite need because I, I when I take my medicine, my emotions stay calm, I stay calm, and I don't just go out and make those rash decisions. It actually makes it easier for me to sit there and think about things before I do them. 
Um, and so that's, that's something that is in my, it's actually in my plan that I like, I need to do this. Cause if I don't, yeah. I'm just going to end up slipping up again. When James, did you do a, a transition plan when you moved out of the intensive, I guess, program and moved into house leadership? I, I never did the transition plan, but one, real quick, real yeah. quick on the counseling, man. If like, I can get him all that through my work. Like we have substance abuse counselors. We have all that that he can go to through my work if you want to if you want to do that when you come home like that's not even an issue but no i didn't do any transition plans i didn't do no exit plans anything when i left honestly yeah well one one thing that we're going to want to to get isaac to do is i guess an exit plan or a transition plan but but in that transition plan um, you know, we talk about the usual things. It's going to ask you about the meetings, you know, around you and whatnot. It's going to ask you uh, about your recovery network and jobs and, and some of the some of the some of the, uh, you know, markers for recovery. But one of the big things that I always go to when I'm reviewing these with with my coaches or anybody comes to me is I look at the goals, you know, and and we ask you to at least in the transition plan, I haven't looked at an exit plan in forever, but transition plan, you know, we, we ask you to, to, to outline five, you know, uh, short-term goals and I think five or six long-term goals. And then we ask, you know, how you, you're going to, you know, what, what steps you're taking to meet those goals. And so, you know, without having that in front of you and just jumping on you right now, you know, short-term goals, you know, what, do you have any short-term goals right now off the top of your head? Um, I do problem is i can actually see the paper from here oh you have you have the paperwork already. It, it's right there on the couch over there ah, okay. um and i've been i've been working on it a little bit um but my short-term goals are actually pretty simple um top and foremost is i want to get my daughter back in my life okay um and i i'm planning to get started on that as soon as i i walk through the doors of my house it's going to be the first thing i'm doing is i'm finding out what i need to do for that um i've got that I want to go back to college. Um, I took a class and then never continued, and I don't even know why. Okay. Um, I want to I want to get an IT internship uh, because if I could sit in front of a computer for the rest of my life, I'd be happy for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, you could and, probably do that without an internship too, and make a lot of people <laughs> live live in a basement somewhere. But yeah. <laughs> I want to make money for it. There you go. Ah, <laughs> ah, okay. That's the okay. important part. Um, and I, I can't remember what the other two I have on there are. Okay. How about um, long-term goals? I only have three of them at the moment. Um, one of them is su sustain <laughs> sustained recovery. Okay. Um, and then... I want to finish college um, with at least a master's degree. Um, and the third one was within the next 10 years, I want to open my own software development firm and mm. start making applications and programs that people can use across the country. So there's a, there's a, I'm glad you, you put sustained recovery in there um, in the, in the long-term goals. You know, James, what do you think about all these? Did you, you heard these goals? I mean, all those goals are attainable is what I think. You know what I mean? If you're willing to put into work and the effort that it takes to get you there, then you know they're all attainable. Yeah. I, I, really, I, really, I really want to see him get back in his daughter's life. Like, yeah. I know that hurts. You know what I mean? I know it does. And, you know, we, we talked a good bit about that on the way down the Richmond. You know, I think that's very important for him and for his daughter. Yeah, that's one one of my long term goals when I left there. When I got out, was sustained recovery as well. But you know, to rebuild and mend the relationship with my kids because they're everything, and like I was absent for so long. So that, that's one of my goals as well with them. So I want to see him be able to obtain that with his daughter. Yeah, I I um there's a there's a I don't know expression i forget forget uh, what you would call this i guess it's an expression or uh, about recovery and you know what you put in front of your recovery you're going to lose and mm -hmm. and I, I i i believe that and when i 
I mean, and I, be, I believe that when I'm putting down my recovery goals or when I'm putting down my life goals, you know, I, when I'm talking to other people, you know, I, I recommend having that on the list. And for me, you know, I like to say, well, you know, be on the on the top of that list and the reason i say that is you know we, we look recovery is a self-defined and i firmly believe that you know my recovery is not going to look like your recovery it's not going to look like justin's recovery you know and, and thank god for that for real you know and and we define it different ways blah 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 you know and you know if i'm working on myself on a daily basis which is you know how i kind of work on my recovery if i'm working on myself on a daily basis all those other goals you know come or 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 more for you know the, they they come to, to what's supposed to happen you know and i i i look at my life a year ago and i look at my life now and i think the things i wanted a year ago you know some of that has not only come true but like things that i never imagined would come true have come true and some things i wanted to you know haven't happened you know, and that's that's life, right? You know, life on life's terms. And it's not so much about the goals, you know, the outcomes. It's about the effort going into those goals. And, you know, and and I like, you know, I like to be able to work my 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 one day at a time program. You know, Yeah, I want to have goals. That's why we do goals. You know, and I want to have strategies for those goals, tactics and whatnot, how I'm going to achieve those goals. And, you know, I want to make sure that I work one day at a time, you know, and, and for me, you know, it's about setting intentions on the daily basis, making sure I take care of the stuff like making my bed and, and having my office clean and available so that when, you know, John and Bob just decide to drop in at one o'clock and one forty-five, I'm still in there talking to people, you know, like it's, it's there and available. And, and we have these conversations, I'm present, you know, and when I'm present, I can, you know, I start to expand things and like, and suddenly, you know, suddenly I'm at Thanksgiving dinner with my grandmother and it's not like me, you know, years ago where, you know, I was nowhere to be found on Thanksgiving dinner, you know, or, or I'm present, you know, when my sister needs help with, uh, she's going to get, you know, for example, they were going to go get the second shot for the vaccine and she needed me to ride with her so I could look after the, her kids, you know, for a few minutes while she was in line there. You know, it's like, I'm present for my family. I'm present for my loved ones. I'm present for myself in my recovery. And that's like, that's a beautiful thing that comes with time, you know, like trusted me with my, yeah, my sister and I've always gotten along and I never really, you know, didn't, I didn't steal money from my sister, but still, you know, like I trust myself to be with her kids. You know, that's the big deal for me. You know, she may have trusted me when it wasn't necessary, when, when it, I should, I wouldn't believe that she should trust me, but I trust myself now when those situations. So, you know, those will come like that'll come, you know, you, you got a lot ahead of you, man. How do you feel about all that? Uh, I'm, I'm scared. Yeah. It's actually one of the, one of the things that's in my, is in my list of fears on my plan is leaving. Yeah. Like I am, I'm, I'm honestly scared of what's going to happen when I get back home. And so don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> Stay. You know, I, I'd be, I'd be, I'm going to say this too. Though. I'd be worried if he was not scared. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, I'm not, it, it's actually comforting to me to know that you're scared. You know what I mean? Because if you thought you had this and it was under control and in 28 days you were magically you know, healed, I would be death, you know, worried about you. But there's my mom. <laughs> well, wait, before we get to that, though, I want to, James, what I, what I, what I'm hearing and I love this too, right? Like I always want to, I want to hear that fear too, right? Like I, if you're telling me you don't have any fear, I'm like, you, you either, either there's, some, a serious psychological issue that needs to be addressed or you're lying through your teeth, either one. Right. And yeah. either one of those, that means you, you have something. And so hearing that, and then also what I'm hearing is the, I'm now talking about the decision that I'm about to make and I'm listening to people. And although I have said what I think I might do, I'm still open to the fact that I might do something different. And, and I, I love that. I mean, that gives me hope. And regardless of what you do, like, listening to what I heard your father say, I'm going to support you either way, you know, whatever you do, I'm going to support you. And I, I think that's amazing. That's beautiful. You know, I have very, you know, like Justin said, just stay. I mean, like, I want to say that too, because I mean, I have a very strong opinion on what you should do, but it's also not my life, you know, and ultimately, you know, what's best for you may not be what's best. What, what I think is best for you is certainly not what may be the best thing for you. And I recognize that through my recovery. I'm not trying to fix, manage and control everything anymore. Well, most of the time I'm not. So but, I usually am. 
Yeah, 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 you are. <laughs> and uh, I hear that. But, but Justin, before you actually click on it, let me read it real quick. Don't hover over it because I won't see it. There we go. Melody Funkhauser says, James' mother here. I would like to just point out that James comes from a family of addiction and what the McShin program has done to bring him to where he is today, I will forever be grateful. Isaac Kibler, you need to take care of you first <laughs> so that you can be there for those. This is Isaac Kibler right here. Um, you need to take care of you first so that you can be there for those you love and who love you. I am very proud of you both. Uh, I'm very proud of the both of you, excuse me, for realizing I need glasses, new glasses for realizing the problem and getting into the program, which is getting into the solution. Thank you, Melody Funkhouse. I'm sorry I butchered your words there. Now you can click it there, Justin. But um, that's beautiful, man. How do you feel? That's grandma up there, right? Is that, that's, yeah. that's, you have two grandma, is that other grandma? Or that's that, mama. That's mama. <laughs> and G Ma was earlier. Yes. Man, you got both your grandmoms. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I have one left and I love, I love her. And, and to be a bit, like, I got to see her at Thanksgiving. I was just saying. And not only did I get to see her be present, but but I um, I made a cookie recipe that her mother brought from Scotland. Uh, oh, agree. we have some in the in the in the other room. I forgot I brought you some, Justin. Shit, shit what now? We've got cookies in the other room. My great grandmother's recipe. Yeah, they're from Scotland, so they're you know butter, sugar, and flour. Here you go, kid. Butter, but, sugar, and flour. I mean, actually, that's literally all that's in the cookie. <laughs> butter sugar flour uh and then a little rice flour and then you know you spread on some raspberry preserves smash them together put a little uh, icing on top and a maraschino cherry and bob's your uncle but they're good and they did you say bob's your uncle i did indeed yeah i did all right that's a very english thing um but anyway mama g ma good to have you both on on the show watching um, the beauty is the ability to stay and get well. Thank you, Debbie. It's good to see you watching. Uh, Debbie Rosenbaum, Rosenbaum over here. Uh, she's on our board of directors. She is the chairwoman of the board. Um, Hi, Debbie. It was nice to finally get to meet you in person. <laughs> um, so, wow, you got you got grandma, you got Jima, you got mama, you got dad up here. Do you call your dad dad? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, 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 and you've got like Brian Merritt's got a lot of time up here. You know, Debbie's got a family member who's got a lot of clean time. You know, you've got the two of us over here. You got, you know, you know, between the two of us, you know, we may have a few days, um, but <laughs> at least a week, <laughs> at least a week. Um, but between, you know, the two of us, you got a lot of people on your side, you know, and that's kind of neat, man. Look, you got people up here on your side saying stuff. How, how do you feel about that? Uh, it, it, it does help. Like, like I said, I, like I'm scared to go home. Yeah. But it, it does help to know that when I do get to that point, or when I when I do go home, that I have all of these options. All, all like I have an entire network there too. Um, my whole family supported me the entire time I was here. Mm -hmm. Um, the first Saturday, G Mom actually sent up a care package. Had a whole bunch of candies and any snickerdoodles. No. <laughs> <laughs> no snickerdoodles. <laughs> um. But there were like books and stuff, yeah. uh, like crosswords, word searches, stuff that I could do because we really do just spend a lot of time over at the house yeah. um, or sitting around waiting for the next group to start because I stopped smoking while I was here, too. Good job. Wait, um, you stop. Well, wait, is this because you wanted to stop smoking or is this because you were broke? Uh, actually, I've had money the whole time. OK, um, but Kevin ran out of cigarettes the other day and I said, here, take my last pack and. Wow. I haven't picked up another one since. Wow. I started smoking when I got here. <laughs> Me too, man. I I know, right? that, that's not true. <laughs> no, I hadn't smoked in three years when I got there. Yeah, I picked it back up is what I mean. I, that's I picked I mean. it back I, up. Yeah. Um, I have quit since then, and then I've gained like 45, 50 pounds, but maybe even closer to 60 pounds. But um, but anyway, good for you. Good for you. Awesome. What um, – now, you – what I'm hearing about the transition back to your house, and then we, we'll we'll, we'll uh, talk about this real quick. But we, transition back to to going up north is that you're being faced with a lot of challenges right off the bat, right off the jump, and it's the holiday season. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about all that? Um, I'm ex I am excited to be home for Christmas. Um. There is no would, place like home for the holidays. Yeah, I, I was a little more excited when I had a place, like when we had a house lined up and I was going to be in a home of my own for Christmas. Yeah. Um, but 
I, I am excited to be going home for Christmas and um, seeing my family for Christmas. Um, and I think this will be the first Christmas where my mother does not make mimosas, which is awesome. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. They're delicious, but sounds like a bad path to start on. <laughs> Well, this I mean, you look, I mean, I we Justin and I were just in the grocery store this morning and buying half and half and, and you know, going up to the half and half aisle goes right past the orange juice. And don't you know, this is so funny you say this, because don't you know, they are clever at that Kroger. They put the Prosecco right across from where the orange juice is. They're like setting me up for mimosa. And I loved a mimosa back in the day. I loved me. But I, one was definitely too many. A thousand was never enough for me. Right. You know, and I mean, but I'm looking at that. I'm, I also even said to Justin, like, man, these guys got it going on. They're smart because they know where they're going. Family time means alcohol. You know, let's let's not deal with these issues. Um, it can be difficult. Yeah, well, good good for you, man. I I was at, you know, I was at uh, I've been at a couple family events recently, and you know, Thanksgiving dinner, people were drinking, and and you know, I'm I'm okay with it. Um, you know, I don't I don't think too much of it, but you know, I was at a, a, a same same family, but an event two months before that. And my cousin, who knows I'm in recovery, but, you know, doesn't really know what that means. You know, he actually, you know, handed me, well, he offered me a beer and I actually put it in my hand. I was like, oh, no, no. And, and you know, he wasn't a jerk or anything. And I explained to him. But, you know, it's just kind of funny that, you know, people even knowing that I'm in recovery don't know what that means for me. So it is really, really important that I identify as a person in recovery. But also, you know, I, I know what that means for me. You know, and for me, that means, yeah, that beer sounds like a good idea, but what it's going to do is going it's going to start. I know what it'll do for me. You know, that's going to start me off on the races there. And, you know, I didn't have to make a big deal of it or a big show of it. You know, he wasn't being a jerk. He was being a polite. He's one of my favorite people. You know, we were very, very close when we were younger. We're still close, but, you know, we were you know younger when we were kids. We were all over all around each other. And, you know, now it's just sort of like, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm good. You know, I, I, I don't drink. And he, I, you know, he. He kind of asked me, I don't know if you do, you know, he kind of was tiptoeing around. I was like, no, 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 this, you know, this is what recovery means for me. And I explained it. And that was it. That was the end of the story. It was no big deal. He's drinking his beer and whatnot. I didn't, you know, have any explosions or get pissed off or feel any sort of way. But the nice thing is, is that I drove myself to the house, you know, where the party was. And then I drove myself sober home when I felt like it, you know, and that was nice. I mean, that's what recovery gives me. It gives me these options today. You know, to do those things. So for you and in the next couple of days, what do you need from us? And I mean us. I mean, you've got your father. You've got Ma, uh, Mama. You've got Gma. You got Justin. You got John S. You got Mo downstairs. You got Jesse. You got Billy Bob and, and, and everybody at your house. What do you need from us? Um, well, luckily enough for myself, I'm very fortunate. Nobody in my house but me was a drinker. Um, stepdad is a celiac. He can't, uh, gluten really messes with him real bad. Mom gets migraines real bad, so she doesn't touch it either. So, um, and I don't think that it's going to bother me even if they did to see it in front of me. Um, because I know that if I touch it, it's a whole nother story. Um, so really what I need is the people that are going to hold me accountable for that. And when I go to do it, smack me on the back of the head and say, stop it. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. What if somebody's not there? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't typically drink alone. <laughs> That's what those numbers are for. Yeah. The, but yeah. So like, uh, I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into the Valero down the road or walked into Kroger um and and it doesn't even bother me anymore i just walk right past it i don't look at it just grab what i need to grab and go um so i've got the numbers i've got this i've I've clearly got the support network at home um so i think i think i'm doing pretty well for myself honestly okay and and for the next what Six days, seven days, six days, whatever it is, five days. What are we? Tuesday. What day is it, Justin? I don't know. It is. It doesn't. It's it Tuesday. Tuesday's the seventh. So we got. We got. Well, I don't know. Oh, it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 1941, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's 2021. Oh, wow! It's 80 years today. Is that right? Yeah. Am I right? 80 Sound years today. Sounds right. Wow. 
I gotta call my grandmother. She, but yeah. Um, uh, well, I, she she remembers it pretty clearly. It's funny. My my my. That's a that's a whole. But um, you've got a few days left before you leave here, right? And what I mean by yeah, what can we help you with? But what can we help you with in the next couple of days? as you're making the transition, whatever that transition is, how can we best support you while you're still here at McShen? That's a really tough question. Yeah. Um, I feel like I really do have the support I need as is. Like I know that if I'm having a tough time, I can walk into your office or uh, I grabbed cricket the other day because I was having a, a pretty tough time. Um. I mean, I showed up here with an entire sport network here because of uh, dad's friends. Um, so when I when I got here, so many people... We rolled deep around here, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got here and almost it, it felt like almost every day somebody new was running up to me and going, little duck, little duck. And I'm like, <laughs> who's this one? Um and and so i mean i've had the support that i've needed the whole time i've been here so far and it really has been amazing to see so many people ready and willing to support me in anything i needed while i was here okay dad what do you feel what are you thinking right now what's bubbling up just one man like how proud i am of it isaac you know what i mean and and two, I'm just sitting here, like, it's kind of tearing me up, man. Like, I really miss, like, him talking about that network of people. Like, I miss the shit out of you guys down there, for real. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a family, you know what I mean? And how happy I was that they that they supported him, you know what I mean, when he got there and, and through his journey there. It makes me feel good. I'm, I'm so grateful to hear that you've taken not only the lessons you learned while you were here, but the lessons you learned while you were in the program at RSW, and now you're using those skills to help the next sick and suffering. You know, how, how are those, how are you, uh, how are you getting along with your participants or clients or however your people? You know, well, I wish I had, there was a magic pill that everybody would just, you could give somebody and they'd be healed. Yeah. If, they, if there was, a, if there was one magic pill, I'd take two. <laughs> yeah, me too. But you know, like it gives me purpose really every, you know what I mean? Every day. You know, I have some people that are real receptive. Some people are doing really great. You know what I mean? They're putting in the work. You know, you have some that that's that just aren't ready, aren't there yet. And those yeah. that's kind of hard. You know what I mean? Because like I said, you want everybody to get it. But you know what I mean? I, I love my job. Like, like I said, it gives me purpose. You know, and I don't know, man. It's it's been a blessing. You know, talking about those goals, like. The goals that I can't even remember what I had written down, but like I know that I have surpassed every goal that I've ever like. I'm living a life that's beyond anything I thought I would be at this point. You know what I mean? After six months of being out of incarceration and uh, being able to be present is, is the biggest gift, really. Not only in my own life, but my kids' life, my mom's life, my sister, my nieces, nephews, everybody. It's just It's just a gift. That's awesome. Um, any final words, James? You want to? Any wisdom you want to pass along to Isaac here, or any of us, or or share? Well, I'm gonna say to him, man. Like I said, right up until the 28th day, I was going home to just keep being open minded, listen to those suggestions. You know what I mean? Make the best decision, you know, for yourself. And like I said, I'll support you the way, and I love you, dude. You're you're, you're inspiring me. You know what I mean? For real. I'm glad you're there. And it's according to, you know, to Nathan and Justin, I love you guys and I miss you. I miss you too, James. Miss James. you too, bud. Do you, uh, well, before we get to your final words, Isaac, there was something you said that I want to point out. And perhaps maybe you, I, I caught it. Maybe you caught it. Maybe you caught it, dad. But, you know, I'm, I'm tacitly going to use this new privilege to just smack you <laughs> at any moment because that's what I heard from that. <laughs> 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 now any any final thoughts last words you want to share with us um no not really i mean i'm pretty quiet i keep to myself and I, it's probably hold on did you just say you're pretty quiet 
I've been breaking out of that a good bit since I've been here. I was going to say, I got 11 on the people over there that might disagree with that, but okay. (laughs) I I really do like to keep to myself. And I mean, part of that is the isolation. Um, And I I stayed like that for a while, quite a long time, actually. Um, But I I love you too, Dad. Um, I planned on calling you later. So it was kind of funny that we ended up here today. Um, And I, I guess that's it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you uh, do you have any words from above that you want to share with us? Uh, that was that was brilliant. Thank yeah. you. Stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of hungry. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <clears throat> keep coming back. Re- really, just uh, stay in contact with people, man. And uh, I mean, if you want to stay, that would be cool. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I understand, you know, wanting to, uh, get back to normal life, real life. Um, cause you do live in a bit of a bubble here. Um, but you know, I mean, it's, uh, it is scary out there, you know, it's really yeah. scary. Um, I was here for six months, actually both times I was here, I was here for exactly six months. Um, and that was the big mistake that I made the first time I left. Uh, when I left, I didn't keep in contact with anybody. Um, you know, I, I just, I left and, uh, I just kind of went and did my own thing. Uh, and it wasn't long until I was using again. Um, and that's, that's been the main thing that I've done differently this time is I've, made it an absolute priority to stay around the herd and, you know, um, stay as close to, um, people in recovery as possible and stay as, as active in recovery as possible. Um, and that's been, that's been the, the biggest difference, uh, this time around, literally. Um, so yeah, just stay in contact, man. Keep those numbers and keep using them. And uh, yeah, that's it. You also have a pretty sick monster truck collection back there. I have the sickest monster truck collection. <laughs> it's only going to get big. I, okay, so me and Teresa were in Walmart psh, like a month and a half, maybe two months ago. They have a grave digger power wheels. It's not just whoa. Yeah, yeah. Like it, oh, I, want, I want one. For okay, real. so. The yeah. maximum weight capacity, I think, is 130 pounds. <laughs> oh, so I fit. I, 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 okay, so it's it's. Uh, I think it's 400 dollars. Okay. Whoa. Now, the, okay, so you know Whoa. how you know how you know how Power Wheels like. Yeah, that's another. You're not 130 pounds either. You, right. I understand that. Okay. This would be merely decoration. I would probably put it in the back of my truck and just strap it down and have it there. Okay. <laughs> we could adapt that with a chainsaw motor, though. We, yeah, there. Okay, so I've put a lot of thought into this. Okay, this thing it doesn't just have like like the plastic like it's it's got actual tires. Okay, it's got a a suspension system. It has a metal front. Like it. This so this thing, thing is more viable than your actual truck. Yes. What you're <laughs> um, and I want it very badly Ooh. uh i don't have 400 dollars to to drop on a power wheels toy but um <laughs> if i did i Ooh. it would be sitting in this room right now and Ooh. i would be hitting it <laughs> you know if it was in this room every participant would walk in here and be trying trying to climb and all over it. i would charge them five dollars to do so Ooh, that's one way to get five dollars per it. ride that's the 400 bucks <laughs> Exactly. There you go. Exactly. Well, all right. Well, now that we're exploiting our participants, thank you for that. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. We need a playground in here. Well, anyway. All right. Look, thank you all for being here today, man. Happy Thanks for having me. Um, James, it's good to see you, man. I, I, I want to, we've got to do another show and actually hear more about what you're doing out there. Cause I, I love that you're taking this and using the skills, man, and, and really just going with it. And that's beautiful to me. So I definitely want to keep in touch and, and have you on the show again. Um, for anybody, thank you. Um, anybody out there, man, you know how to get in touch with us. Give us a call. We, I'll tell you what. 
I know you, you Justin's got his finger on the button to hit the to end the show, but I do want to say something. You know, we did something the other day, man. We are at full capacity with our mail program right now. And and what that means is we're not even full capacity. We're above full capacity because we got people sleeping on cots. And I'm not saying like, look, like we 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 got a lot of a lot of people who need a lot of help around here. And there's other organizations and and we're not turning we're not turning people away from recovery. We're, you know, we're having a you know, use other resources. But I'm saying, man, there's a lot going on right now. And if you need help, man, we're going to try to help you. You know, we're going to try to find you a place and try to get you in. But you know, if you're in recovery in our in our housing, you know, right now you have an, a unique opportunity to really take advantage of a lot of resources. We got a full we're at full capacity with our men's program. I think we're almost at full capacity with the women's program. We're getting ready to open another house, hopefully by the beginning of the year. And <laughs> And I'm laughing, James. You, I'm laughing because it's supposed to <laughs> yeah. You you get it, right? Um, I heard that in July. Well, so well. Here's the rub on this, right? We're waiting on issues that 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 the whole global supply chain crisis issue is preventing us from getting done. At least that's what I'm told. I don't know. I let's slap on some cabinets and be done with it. But whatever. Um, but I mean, really, these things have to be done the right way. But the thing is, we have full capacity, which means we're helping a lot of people right now, which means there's a lot of knowledge in these buildings and these rooms right now. Take advantage of that. You know, take the opportunity to get to know and build your network. Like Justin, Justin was my first house leader when I first moved into this organization. He's one of my best friends today, you know, and that comes from those nights where, you know, I had really had to have some really scary conversations about the crazy thoughts that were going on in my brain, you know, that now sound funny when I think about it. But at the time, man, those were the shoot. I don't know if I can handle this. I might just tell myself that I'm a complete piece of shit and leave, you know, so those, those were really important. You know, use the opportunity to find the people who aren't just going to co-sign your BS Now, don't get it twisted. I'll co-sign some of Justin's BS and he'll co-sign some of mine. So I have to have a broader network. But the point is, is like this. I know, right? I know. Man, I, I still, I'm so hurt that you didn't bring me hard. I know. That's because he knows me. That's the problem. But like, you know, this is the opportunity right now. Where we have all these resources at our fingertips, you know, and use those resources. Um, love y'all. Uh, I know we're, we're over an hour, man. I just want to say goodbye. See you Thursday at 2.30. Um, special time, not regular two o'clock. We'll be at two thirty because we're gonna take advantage of an opportunity to meet with a new author. So we'll see you Thursday. Have a good night. Thanks again, James. Glad to see you, Isaac. Really glad to see you, everybody. <laughs> later, and later, James. Justin. Later, later man. Bye. Bye.